Welcome to Seeing More of the Universe. I'm your host, Alyssa Goodman. Today, we're going to focus on one of my absolute favorite topics in data visualization, how to utilize new technology and clever strategies to connect data, language, and pictures. As you can see from the graphic, people think in a way where those three things are connected, but when they go to communicate, I have to say that sometimes modern publishing standards tend to separate data which aren't included with pictures or language in papers, and even pictures from language where figures are offset or separated from text or captions that explain them. So I'm gonna give just a few examples here. I'm gonna start with a very simple one of how you can fix these problems. Um, and then we'll get more and more complicated and end up talking about augmented reality. But let's start with the simple one. Here's a graph that a graduate student who's actually quite great at data visualization and is a professor now, made a few years ago using very standard approaches. There's some lines on a graph, there's different line styles and different colors, and there's a figure caption that explains what the different lines are. So I told him about these ideas about connecting data, language, and pictures and asked to see what he could do to improve the figure. <clears throat> His next iteration was this one where there's a key so there's now a lot of words on the screen which actually kind of distract you because they're in that funny box and they're not obviously attached to the lines. Now, of course, that's a standard procedure. So a lot of you are probably saying, what's wrong with that? Well, let me show you what could be better. Here's the final figure that we put in the paper where you see that the lines, which are very smooth, so it's not really a big inconvenience, are ever so slightly broken by the titles that describe what each line is. So that's an excellent connection of data, language, and pictures, and you don't even need a figure caption. And of course, some journals require that you have a figure caption, but it could be very, very short in this case. So hopefully you agree that that last version of the figure puts much less of a cognitive load on the reader and lets them focus much more on the information in the plot than trying to figure out what the plot means. So that's enough for our simple example. In this document, which you can find online, which is called the paper of the future, many different technologies for connecting data, language, and pictures are demonstrated. I don't have time to show them all to you in this short video, so I highly recommend that you watch uh, one of two demo videos that are available about this paper of the future on YouTube. So instead, what I'm gonna do here is just pick out one figure in the paper that uses uh, a storytelling approach where you click on different tabs and also linked views where you can highlight different subsets of the data to see what's going on in another graph when you choose particular points. We talk about that principle in another one of these videos where we focus on linked views. But for now, let's just talk about how that figure was included in this online document, which itself is in a platform called Authoria. The way that that happened was this was made about five years ago because we were experimenting with these technologies on behalf of the American Astronomical Society. And again, you can read more about that on the tiny URL you see on the screen. But anyway, some custom software had to be invented by friends that would take the output from the glue linked view data visualization program and make it available in JavaScript. And that custom software was called D3PO. And that let you insert the module, which just is a JavaScript module, into Authoria. Today, you can do the same thing uh, using a commercial tool called Plotly, which Glue also exports to. The details of this don't matter, except that what you're doing is exporting from one open source tool to another. And that, the same way that Snap Circuits lets you easily connect different circuit elements, really the open source and GitHub world today lets you connect a lot of software together to make something much more complicated than it would have been possible to produce without all of this wonderful community participation a long time ago. So just remember, you can probably find the parts you want if you try hard enough. Now let's move to the present. Just this past year, I was honored to be part of a big discovery of something called the Radcliffe Wave. And we made a special website that you can visit here at this tiny URL to learn more about the discovery and about these graphics. But for today, I just wanna use two examples here to focus on the value of interactive graphics, and then we'll talk 
about something even fancier, augmented reality. But just take a look at this figure here on the left that was actually included in the Nature paper and generated originally again using glue and exported to Plotly. And what you wind up with is a figure that you can publish anywhere on the web, including in a paper or in a public relations facing document that lets a user, sophisticated or novice, explore the data, turning on and off models however they like. So that's the figure that was in the paper. We added another figure online at the site meant for the press uh, and this figure was actually, the still was shown uh, all over the web, but actually the better version of it, again, it was generated in glue with a, a module inserted into glue that lets you use a web tool, Worldwide Telescope, for displaying data in context, astronomical context. And you can see here that we've put the points along the wave in the context of a cartoon model of the Milky Way. At that same website where you see the tiny URL here on the screen, you can also see Worldwide Telescope used to put the data for the Radcliffe wave in the context of other real astro astronomical data rather than uh, a cartoon. But my point here is that the rich interaction that you give users really does uh, unite data, language, and pictures uh, in ways that they don't even notice uh, how complicated it was to produce something so simple. Uh, but I will tell you, it's not as complicated as you think. Anyway, to continue uh, to the actual very near-term future, and in some lucky cases present, we can start thinking about my next favorite technology, which is augmented reality. Now, to be clear, augmented reality has to do with mixing what you can see in the real world uh, with what you see projected as data. So sometimes it's called mixed reality. This is different than virtual reality, where you can't see the world around you. And that really makes it virtual reality does much harder to see data language and pictures all at once. So I'm gonna talk here only about augmented reality, which I actually think is a superior technology for what we're trying to do here. And we recently proposed to the National Science Foundation that all American Astronomical Society journals, which already accept the technologies you saw in the paper of the future, will now accept augmented reality figures. And uh, because proposals don't allow for video, uh, here's a set of stills explaining what I'm about to show you um, in a video. I leave this here just because we talk about display modes in our 10 questions video, and you see what you have to do when really what you want to do is show a video, but instead, instead you can show salient stills. So here I'm still not yet going to show you a video. I'm going to show you another still figure from the proposal uh, on the left and what that does uh, when you actually try to use it. So you'll notice that the figure on the left is making an attempt to connect data language and pictures. You see all three on the page, but what you don't see is that if you scan the QR code there, you actually see the data floating in 3D uh, using just your iPhone, in this case, just to be fun, above an actual copy, a printed copy of the paper. And now finally, to give you a video view of what goes on here. You can see that there's two ways that we use the augmented reality. You can actually try this. If you scan that code on the left, you'll be asked to place the data on a flat surface and you can then walk around it with your phone and zoom in and out either physically moving your phone further and closer or using those bars on the screen. It's also important that you can change the opacity there so that you can use the background, which yes, is my kitchen in this particular case, uh, to give you visual cues about where you are in this immersive universe. Um, alternatively, you can use a really cool device called a merge cube that lets you literally hold the universe in your hand. All right, not quite literally, but pretty close. So the patterns on the side of that cube, which by the way, could be anything. This is just a particular commercial example, a merge cube, uh, register in your phone's camera, and then, as you saw, you can move the universe around in your hand without having to walk around the room. So again, there's a proposal pending to the NSF with all of these participants here uh, to hopefully make this true in the near-term future. And some prototype versions of this will appear in the papers you see referenced at the bottom of the screen. And I'm very grateful to my many collaborators for making this possible. So. That's what I wanted to say today about uh, connecting data language and pictures. 
but I wanted to put this little funny icon of a cube on the screen here to remind you that the kind of data that you see in these two panels is high dimensional data that's literally high dimensional, 3D spatial. But in fact, there are interesting questions that we talk about in the 10Q video, and that also we talk about in this video about what we call data dimensions and display, another one in these series that talks about how you choose what to show in terms of your data, depending on the dimensionality of the data and the dimensionality of your display. So I highly recommend that you watch that video next and that you enjoy the rest of the Seeing More of the Universe series whenever you have time. Thanks.